Hey everybody, it is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot and I have an interesting new series that I'm thinking of doing and it's called Choose Your Own Adventure Tarot and it really just allows you to pick whatever pile is resonating in your life right now and if all three are, you can listen to all three um, or if there's a specific topic in your life that you really would like to look at. and. Um, for pile number one, we have healing. If you're working on healing yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, and you would like to focus on your healing, you can choose pile number one. For pile number two, we have karma, untying the knots of karma. For those of you that feel you're in some complicated karmic situations and life is um, you're working through some heavy karma at this time in your life. You may want to choose a message about your karma for pile number two. And for pile number three, if you have some relationship issues or you're having some love quandaries in your life right now and you're wondering about your relationship or relationships in the future, um, or what you can expect from relationships in the future, then if that's a main focus in your life right now, then you'll choose pile number three for love, relationships, and harmony, okay? And if you're concerned about all three in your life at this point, you can definitely watch all three piles. So when I was a kid, I loved those choose your own adventure books and um, I may do more readings like this in the future if you guys like this format um, to receive a message about some aspect or area of your life at this time, okay? So let me go ahead and clear the piles out and we'll start with pile number one, the healing pile. You can find links and timestamps in the description box below. You can also find information on how to book a natal chart reading with me and also how to book a personal private tarot reading with me. So let's go ahead and begin the reading. Okay, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the healing pile and you're looking to receive a message about your healing in life right now, whether that's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, okay? And we are going to go ahead and begin with the Oracle cards and then we'll grab a tarot message at the end. Okay, pile number one. So let's go ahead and begin. We have six of earth, okay? We have 10 of earth. Okay, and we have seven of water, okay? Underneath there, we have the five of cups, change your focus, okay? And we have journey, you may move to a new place for work or travel for work. Exploring the world gives you the experience that you need to succeed, okay? Well, traveling, journeying, Investment. Invest in your education and make big plans for the future. Then take a calculated risk, but save for something to fall back on. Yeah, that's interesting. And there's a big message here about financial and economic healing happening in your life right now. Okay. And being able to nurture and take care of the things that are important to you. Okay. And we have here, maybe some of you are working on um, education, classes, learning, all of that is very healing. For those of you that have been going through Five of Cups, um, emotional pain, emotional setbacks and things like that, it's important to um, keep a soft focus towards the things like we want to focus on the things that we the goals and the ambitions that we have but it's more about the journey than arriving however i feel like travel is very beneficial for you now and it does help you bring a new perspective into your life and if you are making some investments into um 
you know, health, emotional well-being, learning, studying. This is very healing for you emotionally. Now with the seven of cups here, there could be a lot of different things that you're interested in um, and that different things that you would like to try and you feel like maybe you're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. Like what do I invest my, if I'm taking a class, right? I, there's three classes that I wanna take. I know I have to narrow it down to just one and kind of focus on that one thing. We have heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Honestly, discuss your feelings, okay? So there's some heart-to-heart -heart conversations that have been happening, okay? For some of you, over the last five to six months, you've been having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people, um, trying to check in on people, trying to see how they're doing, trying to... Um, nurture the people around you, trying to figure out where people's hearts are, where people's heads are, okay? And you may have been kind of sad because it felt like a heart-to-heart -heart conversation wasn't really, um, like the other person wasn't really listening or the other person really wasn't hearing where you were coming from, okay? and you're trying to help, or you're trying to check in, or you've wanted to check in on someone, okay? Um, and really kind of, you know, having some emotional difficulties, I feel like over the last five to six months, maybe some of you have been dealing with that, okay? But I also feel like, you know, productivity, purpose, spiritual purpose, Okay, all of these things are really economic, financial healing. All of this is important too. And with the Seven of Cups, it can be hard to know what to focus on. Okay, but um, we want to change our focus to what isn't working and change our focus to what is working or the positive or the benefits that you're, you're going to be having in your life from travel working in different places, exploring, investing in your education, all of that. We have purification in the Ganges River in India, okay? So there is a purification that happens from travel and journeying into new places. And I feel like you guys are really seeking a sense of safety and stability, comfort, healing, okay? And I feel like you guys feel a lot more safe when, you know, your material needs are taken care of, when you have the time and the money to invest in the things that you care about. Like what I'm seeing is I'm seeing brick by brick by brick pile number one, and I'm seeing like a stabilization of energy in your life. Okay. And it starts with your foundation. It starts with and you'll be able to help and nurture and give and receive and all of that um, in the future, I feel like. But right now, it's about stabilizing your family, stabilizing your economic situation, okay? It's about making sure that you have what you need in the future, okay? And I see a purification happening around your goals and your ambitions, and the things that you want, okay? And you know, sometimes it's like we make it more complicated than it needs to be. And a lot of our happiness in life comes from, you know, being able to like help others and assist others and service and things like that, you know? Um, and I see you guys paying off debts here with this Six of Pentacles, if there's debts that you need to pay off, Okay, I see you paying off debts and having a very happy home and family life is important to you guys and having a sense of normalcy with that is very important, okay? And maybe you're kind of shifting away from some of the more emotional stuff and looking more at um, 
you know, your time, your effort you put into things, um, having safety and security, having people that can rely on you and you rely on them. Okay. And, um, there's some things maybe that you've been procrastinating on with this seven of cups when it comes to your work, your education, your ambition, the, the like financial stability and security that you're looking for in life. Okay. And, um, yeah. And I think it could be very healing for you to have some heart to heart conversations, um, with, some people in your life that are important to you. Okay. And I feel like pile number one, it's very hard for you guys to um, like emotionally disappoint people. I mean, nobody likes to disappoint people emotionally. Nobody likes that. But I feel like for you guys or for people that you have been dealing with in the past, it's very hard for them sometimes to be emotionally honest because they have a hard time disappointing people, okay? And um, I can see where that energy comes up for you sometimes, pile number one, okay? But I do think it is important for you right now to be emotionally honest with yourself and to look at some of the things that you've been putting off or procrastinating on, heart-to-heart -heart conversations, dealing with financial or economic issues, um, education, big plans, opportunities, studying certain topics, things that you've been putting off because you've been procrastinating um, and maybe you need to do some more research on a particular topic as well. And the Ten of Earth is where we are finding magic in the little things in life. And um, we're finding magic in the details and the little things in life. We have here, show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. Wow. Pile number one. If you've been like holding back and procrastinating on putting something out there that's really important to you, then um, because you're like, I have to keep purifying it. I have to keep, you know, it's not ready yet. I have to keep working on it. Okay. Um, no, I feel it's ready. It is ready. There is something you're ready to show the world something here. Okay. And it's going to feel really good to kind of let what you've been working on flow into the world. Okay. And I know you've got this perfectionist energy. I can see that here with this six of earth and 10 of earth, but I mean, yeah, I, I feel like things are stabilizing for you. Once you stop procrastinating on something, things start really stabilizing for you and you're getting really clear about what it is that, and, and something's purifying and becoming more clear. It's less muddy, it's less murky about what you can do next when it comes to your work, your education, your investments. We have here peace. Wow, I love that. And you will have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone, I feel too. And it is going to give you a sense of peace. And some of the emotional discomfort that you've been dealing with is going to dissolve, I feel. Here, pile number one, we have, oh, wow. <laughs> we have the sun in Scorpio and the passion, the passion in life, passionate and a passionate, intense or mysterious phase. Okay. And, um, there's two people like making out on this card and, you know, passion like sexual attraction, passion, it's all very important for you, but it you need to have a sense of trust in order to have peace, right? It's difficult to have peace about an emotional situation if there's no trust there, you know? If there's no honesty, heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and trust, it's really hard to 
give yourself completely over to that passionate surrender pile number one, okay? Um, but I feel like you are becoming more at peace about a passionate or intense, mysterious phase of your life. And um, maybe some of you feel really hard for somebody, like really hard and really deep. Okay, and um, with the Five of Cups here, maybe some of you have been mourning um, a loss about that, okay? Um, or you know it's time to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with that person, okay? And to see what to purify one's intentions, right? Because there is this Sun in Scorpio, there is a way that we can... Um, get lost in the moment and lose ourselves in the moment. But the six of earth and the 10 of earth are all about stabilizing our energy and moving forward with a sense of purpose. And um, yeah, so I know you guys didn't, you're, you picked the healing pile, you didn't necessarily pick the love pile, but some of you could have had a very passionate, intense, situation okay with a person that you're just getting you're going to be getting peace a sense of peace about that okay um and i also think it has to do with like admitting to yourself like i do need you know if i am going to get sexual with someone or i am going to get that intense with someone i do need to understand their intentions i do need to have those heart to heart conversations um I, I can't really like, kiss. even for some people, kissing is very intimate. I can't really kiss or make out or whatever unless I know where I'm at with something, okay? And, you know, admitting that to yourself, that you've had some complicated emotions about something, it's okay to admit that to yourself, okay? And, um... If you've been keeping things to yourself emotionally about a really passionate, intense love affair, um, I feel like you need to be fair to yourself. And if you need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone, do it, okay? Pile number two. And let's go ahead and see. Sometimes people get suspicious when something is too passionate or intense, you know? It rocks the boat a little too much emotionally. You know, pile number one. So maybe some of you are kind of healing from that. But let's go ahead and see when it comes to a healing message for pile number one. Spirit, show me a healing message for pile number one. What does pile number one need to know about their healing? What does pile number one need to know about their healing? I always say it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And even if it was, yeah, the lovers on the bottom of the deck reversed, okay? So a, a love situation or an emotional situation. There's the star card healing, healing from a misunderstanding, okay? And um, it truly is. Like, I know that's a really cheesy saying. It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. I know that's like super um, cheesy pile number one, but I truly believe it. If you have loved intensely before and you have experienced it, you know what it's like, you know, pile number one. We have the 10 of pentacles again. Wow. That feels like a confirmation. And 10 of pentacles is about aligning our goals with someone else too. Um, it also is about, you know, family time and feeling safe and secure and comfortable in that energy. We have King of Wands. Okay, go really going after what you want here. Really going after your goals and really being motivated, having passion, not just passion for a, a person or making out or kissing, but, you know, all the good stuff, the, the beautiful dream, the passion pile number one, but being passionate about one's goals and the things that one is wanting to accomplish in this lifetime, that is very healing for you now, okay? Going after your goals and 
going after the things that matter to you when it comes to accumulating wealth, when it comes to security, when it comes to how you see yourself in five years, right? The Ten of Pentacles is a big planning card um, and it is a financial planning card. So it's becoming passionate about, you know, future financial planning, future security, passionate about the things that you want to do, right? Like I've always wanted to X, Y, Z, one, two, three. And I want to do that before I die someday, okay? And um, we have limited time on this planet. So it's like, yeah, let's go. And having the energy to pursue the things that are valuable and important to you is important. That's a big piece of your healing right now. We have the tower, okay? And we have judgment. Very intense, okay? very intense in some part of your life right now okay and um for some of you i feel like this is like you know getting fired from your job or being let go and that could be a big fear you know like being fired or being laid off um you know or things basically going out of control you know and when things get out of control it's really, really scary, you know? And um, whether that's with our health or work, relationships, there's, I feel like you guys feel that there's a danger of things getting out of control or something is in danger here, okay? And, you know, and perhaps some of you have dealt with a lot of, you know, um, anxiety, about changes you know things happen very suddenly in life sometimes and it's hard to get back up on our feet king of wands and keep working towards our goals it's so hard to do sometimes in life you know especially when you feel like all your progress keeps getting wiped out all the time so i feel for you on that pile number one i really do um and, you know, the judgment and tower can, that's a lot, you know, that is a lot of, and maybe just kind of admitting to yourself, you know, I've been dealing with a lot. I've been dealing with a lot of shakeups and a lot of messy situations, and it's been a huge wake-up call, you know, and sometimes, like, we get a message about our job or we get, um, you know, we get a message about our relationship that it's not as secure as we think it is, right? Or we get a we get a huge wake up call about our health. I can't keep doing this, right? Or we get a huge wake up call about our financial situation. Something's got to give. Something's got to change. Really intense energy. Okay, pile number one. And I feel like, you know, eye on the prize, staying focused and committed, and creative, open and passionate about your security, your goals, and a lot of it may have to be pursued on your own time. You know, especially if during the day you're dealing with a lot of crises, you're dealing with a lot of problems that just come up out of nowhere and shake, rattle, and roll, baby, that type of energy, okay? If you're dealing with a lot of that, I mean, I see peace is a major thing that you guys are wanting to focus on. Um, there may have been a part of you in the past that kind of got addicted to the um, intensity, pile number one, okay? But taking that intensity and putting it into something that is concrete, that can be consistent and last, that is where you're going to feel peace. You're going to see success. You're going to see results. You're going to see growth, okay? And, um, you know, staying committed and focused to the things you've quote unquote always wanted to do in your life. That is a big healing piece for you. Pile number one right now. Okay. So my loves, that is what I am getting for you. I hope that that reading resonated and I'd love to hear your comments or feedback. Let's move on to pile number two.
Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the karma card and today's reading is a reading, a choose your own adventure reading about untying some of the karmic cords that maybe you've accumulated. Um, and it is a message about your karma and where you are with your karma right now. Okay. And over lifetimes and over this lifetime and prior lifetimes, we can accumulate a lot of karma, pile number two, you know? Um, and it can be complicated. Oh, the webs that we weave, right? <laughs> so I am going to, I was just reflecting on this type of karma the other day, the type of karma that accumulates over lifetimes and over this lifetime and builds up and kind of just sits there, right? Like a muddy pile of water. It just kind of sits there. It doesn't really drain out or go anywhere, you know? So we're gonna address some of that heavier karma and talk about um, untying the knots, okay? Untying the knots and working through some stuff here. So let's go ahead. We've got the King of Earth, generous, professional, responsible, okay? The Empress, lavish abundance. I love that, okay? Things moving smoothly in life. Not having to press so hard to get things to kind of bend in your favor, okay? And we have the Five of Water, okay? And this is where we are sometimes, and Five of Water came up in pile number one as well things not turning out the way that we hope, not seeing the positive in a situation, crying over spilled milk, okay? Um, and this could be where we're not recognizing the good that came out of something, because I think there is a lot of good here with the King of Earth and the Empress. And um, I'm gonna take a look at this King of Earth. Yeah, confidently accepting opportunities you're offered, all right, and then nurturing those opportunities. Um, but then we put so much into, into something and it doesn't turn out like the way we wanted it to. And that feeling of emotional disappointment or that feeling of, you know, nothing is gonna work out like I want it to, so why bother, all right? And, um, Let's go ahead and you know, with the Empress, we've got like somebody, I feel you really try to nurture things and take care of things so that they grow in a very healthy way, okay? And I feel that there, you know, I feel that there's somebody that maybe doesn't have the same priorities as you do, okay? Um, and it could be around, you know, having a family. It could be around work. All right, we're gonna get more into it here, but I feel, I'm feeling this energy of, it's like I'm disappointed because somebody doesn't kind of have the same priorities as I do, and they're not putting in the work, the emotional work and effort that I have had to put in, okay? And maybe some of you here have dealt with a lot of things not turning out the way that you expected after you put a lot into something. And that can be very disappointing emotionally. Um, and it can result in us like not trusting something. We have the heart chakra. Wow, I love that. You know, and um, yeah, the heart chakra. We can tell what we care about in life by the time, effort, and energy that we put into something. Okay, and um, we have great match. You're on the verge of finding the perfect work for you. Don't give up. You may need to grow your own business to be truly happy. Okay, and um, for some of you here, like it can be a work situation or an emotional an emotional, I was going to say an emotional vampire situation, but you're, you're, I feel like what you're saying to me, pile number two is, damn, sometimes I'm the emotional vampire to myself, 
you know? And I, what I see here is somebody who puts a lot of work into things and gets very attached to things and um, somebody who is very like responsible and committed. I feel like this is you pile number one or pile number two. You're very responsible. You're very committed. You put your whole heart into the things that you care about. Okay. And when it doesn't work out like it, you want it to, or there's that fear of it not working out like you want it to. Okay. That fear is what may be controlling you. All right. With the five of water, that fear, that fear may be like kind of emotionally controlling you and you're wanting to get out from underneath that fear, you know? And um, I can't ignore that it says great match on here. And, you know, the king of earth and the empress would be a really great match. A really like a match made in heaven um, when it comes to romance as well, okay? But I feel like it's not just, you're looking for a great match for all the things in your life. Um, and a true partner in things. It's like, okay, if I do this and take care of this, I want to know that you're going to be taking care of that. If I watch out for this, I want to know that you're kind of watching out for that. Okay, and I feel some of you have gotten like really tired of doing everything on your own. But you know, at the same time, you may need to grow your own business to be truly happy, okay? And um, you may need to, the Empress would be wonderful at having his or her own business and something that you truly care about, all right? And um, it's like, don't give up because you're on the verge of finding the perfect work for you or the perfect partner for you. And I feel it's become very exhausting. And for sometimes it can be the fear that has become very exhausting too. It's like, I'm afraid I'm gonna find the perfect thing for me and it isn't gonna work. I'm afraid I'm going to, um, you know, find what I'm looking for and it's not gonna, it's not gonna pan out. You know, and that fear can sometimes really hold us back. We have here trapped. You feel stuck in your current situation, but you do have options. Look for another job while keeping the one you have right now. Okay. And um, for some of you, this is like you're feeling very exhausted and trapped and disappointed like you know it's like I put a lot of work and effort and I try my best in situations um, but I feel like I don't know I feel like you guys are saying to me Natalie I feel like some people just don't care as much as I care like I literally put so much into things and I feel like they just don't care okay and if you're feeling stuck and afraid on your current situation, um, it's hard to continue to want to keep growing. But I feel like, you know, yeah, keeping growing and keeping, keeping growing within yourself, even if the place that you're at, I feel some of you are in a situation where you feel you're being controlled or someone's being very controlling with you or trying to control a situation and that's why you feel trapped, okay? And identifying why you have this fear or why this is coming up for you can be really helpful too. But I feel it's like you think somebody is trying to control you, all right? And some of you here could have had you know, a very controlling mother or a very emotionally manipulative mother or just a parent that was that way and made you feel very kind of trapped all the time, okay? And we have here, retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world, okay? And um, yeah, retreating is an interesting idea, pile number two, because Sometimes retreating is exactly what we need to do. We need to kind of mentally and emotionally separate ourselves from a particular energy, okay? 
And retreating can sometimes be very healthy, but sometimes also retreating can be avoidance, you know, and maybe there is a pattern of, you know, avoidance going on as well, feeling trapped, feeling exhausted, and then kind of getting, of avoiding something, okay? And um, we have here chaos, okay? And this shows a volcano erupting. And, um, you know, the Empress really does know how to bring order from chaos and um, really knows how to grow while not letting things become too chaotic, okay? And something to remember for yourself is if things are getting too chaotic, maybe it is time to pull back, okay? Um, and you feel like someone's trying to control you or manipulate you emotionally in a situation because you care so much, you care so much about them, you care so much about the job, etc. At that point, if it is becoming very chaotic, maybe it is time to pull back, okay? And we have here, prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus, okay? And, um, you know, Taurus is also a sign that is very good at helping bring order from chaos, okay? And let's see, we also have willpower. Wow. Okay, so if somebody's trying to override what you want, and someone's trying to take over and manipulate or control and you feel trapped, um, there is a sense of being really stubborn about what you want and pushing back from the chaos, okay? And using our willpower in, in the right way, okay? So we have willpower there. A pattern of stubbornly insisting on something but then retreating and pulling back creates a pattern of chaos in your life sometimes I feel pile number two and I'm sure you are aware of that pattern okay we have moon and Aries and courage believe in yourself okay willpower and courage are two things that are going to help you um, if you feel like, dang, Natalie, I'm stuck in a karmic hole and I feel trapped and I feel like this situation is manipulating my emotions and I can't stand this chaos and I need to get out of this situation, okay, and focus on what my heart really wants, I feel like, you know, willpower and courage are the two things that can really, really help you pile number two karmically, okay? And I would actually want to find the guidebook for this deck because I'm wanting to read that Italy card. And let's see if I can find it. Sorry, pile number two. Talk about chaos, right? Like, can't find it. Where is it at? <laughs> oh, welcome to my own chaos, right? Um gosh, I'd really like to be able to read read you guys a little more detail about that chaos card, talking about getting organized, right? And um, being able to find the things you're looking for. That's, a, <laughs> that's real helpful in life at times, pile number two. And maybe that's something that's going on in your life as well. You're like, damn, I am losing things left and right. Damn, it is chaotic. And I'm trying to take care of everything here, Natalie, but it's it's a lot, okay? And um, willpower and courage, all right, are two things that are really gonna help this help you get through this situation, okay? And um, let's go ahead when other people are pulling back and can't be bothered and aren't willing to step up to the plate you're the you are the solid person in this situation that can move things forward here okay and some of you may have um a karmic energy with a Taurus here or Tauruses may really 
set you off karmically. Also Aries here with this Aries energy. Although I feel like some people that are watching this reading are Aries or have Aries in their chart. Okay, but being able to tackle things and use our willpower to power through is, is that's good. That's something that's going to help you guys karmically, okay? And um, let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and see. Show me a message here, Spirit, about pile number twos. Pile number twos karma. Okay, what does pile number two need to know about their karma as it is right now? What does pile number two need to know about their karma? Okay, three of cups on the bottom of the deck. I love that, staying optimistic, staying hopeful, relying on the support of friends and other people. We have here king of pentacles. Again, there is, that's twice this king of pentacles has come up in this reading, okay? And so there is a particular person that is holding a lot of the chips here and holding a lot of the cards karmically. Okay, and it's a person that has the ability to bring, help bring a lot of growth and success to you, but I feel like you guys want to do it on your own, okay? I feel like there's a benefactor here or somebody that could possibly help or you could get money from or that could invest in what you're doing, um, that cares about what you're doing. But I also feel you guys are like, you know, and it could be a father figure um, who means well, or it could be a brother, or it could be a romantic partner, or, or a friend, or somebody that means well, that has the means to help you. But I also feel like for you guys, karmically, it's more important for you to do it yourself, okay? Particularly my Aries people who have Aries in their chart heavily, coming to this reading. Um, and I feel like finding support through women or finding support through friends is also important here, okay? But I feel like you're not really wanting to rely on, even though this person has the ability to help you, I feel like you're kind of want to do it yourself. And it's that stubborn energy of, I want to do this myself. Now, some of you here could have a Taurus person in your life represented by this King of Pentacles or who has Taurus-like qualities of being, you know, very, um, like, I can help you. I got what you need or this is how you should do it or this is the way that, um, and that's where you may feel a little bit controlled, okay? Or perhaps some of you here have Taurus in your chart too. And you're like, I absolutely hate being controlled, Natalie. I cannot stand that energy, okay? I don't like being emotionally controlled. I don't like being controlled financially. I don't like that shit, okay? Feel you on that. I feel you. And pile number two, um, there is somebody that could give you a boost here or pull you up. All right, but I kind of feel like you're like, I need to do this shit myself and I don't want to rely on this person anymore, okay? So I feel that energy there. We have the Knight of Pentacles. Yep, you're like turning away their help. You're saying, I got this. Thanks, but I got it, okay? Thanks, but my ideas are good too. Thanks, but I am committed to the job as well. Thanks, but um, I know what I'm doing here. Thanks, but, you know, appreciate your advice or insight or whatever, but I'll take it from here, okay? So we've got the Queen of Wands, you know, staying motivated and staying committed. And I feel you guys are also, um, and you don't like accepting help. You're very independent, okay? You're very independent. You're like, stop it, okay? <laughs> You're like, I've got my own thing going on here. You're very independent. All right. But maybe at times it stopped you from, you did reject help 
or you did reject something that could help you because you were being too stubborn. And that's where you really have to decide, pile number two. Do I want to take this help or do I want to take this? Am I being too stubborn? Does somebody actually have something that could possibly influence me in a positive way? And I feel like you guys are like, I don't really want to listen to this person, Natalie. I like doing my own thing. Okay, and here's the thing. What's interesting is a lot of people get no help in life, right? They get absolutely no help. They have to do everything on their own. And maybe, you know, that's, and that, that actually creates a sense of pride and ownership in a person, you know? And um, the Queen of Wands is all about having pride and ownership over what one accomplishes in life. And it's like, I don't, you know, that's nice that you can chip in and help or, but I want to do, I want to run my own show here. Okay. I don't want you always stepping in here. Okay. And I feel there's also somebody that you guys find kind of boring as well. Like maybe they have boring ideas or maybe the things they're suggesting are just blah, you've already tried them, you don't want to, okay? But it's the willpower, you know, it's the willpower to remind yourself, okay, the reason I don't, it'd be easy to take help, but I'm doing this myself, so back off, okay? And it may not be the way that you would do it. It may not be the way that, you would, you know, like, but that's how I'm doing it, okay? But at the same time, pile number two, maybe sometimes you need to ask yourself, am I making it harder for myself? Does this person actually have a good suggestion? Am I making it harder than I need to because my pride won't let me see something here, okay? So that's where we kind of have to deal with our pride and our stubbornness and our vanity and situations, right? We kind of got to deal with it. <laughs> and there may be some things karmically, you're like, you know what, I have made things harder for myself, because I don't want that person to keep helping or I don't want their influence on me. And just let me do my own thing. Okay, so I am seeing that in your reading, we have the page of wands. Pile number two, I've got news for you, my loves. You, some of you here are destined to have a child, a pet, a best friend, whatever. Particularly some of you here are set to have a child that is just as willful and stubborn and courageous and prideful as you are, okay? And I hate to tell you, be the one to tell you this, but some of you are going to be having a mini me that is exactly like you and they're not going to listen for shit. Okay. And they could have the most kind and generous, caring, responsible parents in the world that have the ability to help guide them and give them what they want. And they're like, fuck you. I'm doing my own thing. You can't tell me nothing, okay? So <laughs> some of you are, you know, <laughs> some of you may have a sibling that's exactly like you, that's like that, or you're destined to have a child like that, or an animal, a pet, you know, like my pet, I will tell you, my dog, Franny, is willful and stubborn, and I mean, where who'd she get it from, right? Who'd she get it from? <laughs> and we all have to take a step back, right? And look in the mirror and go, geez, that person is stubborn. Geez, they are courageous and willful, but damn, they don't listen, okay? Or damn, they, they go off and do their own thing and think they don't need me and I get worried because it's like, shit, what are you doing, okay? There is here a huge karmic fire sign pattern going on here, pile number two, that some of you have in your families with your, with your own kids or 
your future kids that you will have or pets. I mean, it comes in our life one way or another, right? Like that energy kind of tends to circle back, right? So it starts with a grand, like a grandfather, it goes to a father, it goes to a daughter, it goes to a child, right? Like you can see the progression here, all right? Um, or it starts with a father and goes to a brother and then goes to the daughter and then goes to that child, okay? You can just see the progression going there. And because these are all court cards, I feel like some of you could have some really, um, you know, karmic relationships within your family, okay? And um, Three of Cups on the bottom of the deck is really an aspect of friendship. So maybe it's better sometimes to focus on um, like your friendships or female friendships or something because everyone in the family can be very stubborn okay <laughs> and um and willful and um maybe even a tad on the controlling end of the spectrum pile number two okay and sorting out the karma with all these people has not been easy and particularly for those of you women who are listening to this reading and there's been a lot of complicated karma with men in your lives or even men in your family and again, with the Empress and the King of Pentacles, I'm getting that there are they people mean well, or they're trying to help, or they're trying, the heart's in the right place with the heart chakra here. Like somebody is trying to help, the heart's in the right place. But it's like, I don't want your help, you know, that type of energy. And, um, you know, there's a lot of creativity here. There's a lot of, like opening of new creative avenues and, um, you know, having the ability to like shake things up and be a mover and a shaker and not always follow the strict guidelines of whoever and whatever, okay? Um, but, you know, willpower and courage are extremely important qualities to have in this lifetime, okay? And I feel some of you here, maybe you've had a lot more willpower and courage than a lot of the men you've dealt with as well, <laughs> you know, and um, either they're, they have no willpower or courage or they're like, you know, little boys that don't have their crap together that have like the never ending Peter Pan syndrome, okay? And I feel like you guys are putting your foot down and you're like, I'm not taking any of that shit, Natalie. Like. None of that is working for me, all right? I'm looking for a specific thing and I'm not gonna stop until I get it, okay? So I love that attitude, I love that energy, I love the fact that you will not be controlled, um, but at the same time, you know, pride cometh before the fall, pile number two. So if somebody is trying to help you and does have their heart in the right place and they actually could help you get something going here, then that is beneficial. And we don't wanna look a gift horse in the mouth either. You know what I mean? So pile number two, that is what I am getting for you, my loves. What an interesting reading <laughs> you guys picked, okay? Lots of karma there, but not all bad. Some karma can be funny and silly and goofy at times too, so. Thank you as thank you pile number two and let's move on to pile number three. All right, a drink of water. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the love pile, and today's reading is a choose your own adventure, and you guys want to know about, get a message regarding relationships and love. So pile number three, let's go ahead and get into it. You're more than welcome to watch the other piles too, if you're wanting, the other pile was healing and karma. Okay, so if you're interested, you can watch those as well. All 
Okay. Getting a little shuffy, shuffy, shuffy here. Shuffy Lulu, pile number three. Let's go ahead and move on to your reading and see what is the message for relationships for you. We've got five of earth, okay? Fears and being held back from something. We've got the queen of wands, a confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful person. Ooh, I like it. Are some of you meeting people that are like not to your level? Okay. Have you found yourself in situations romantically where it's like beneath you? Because I am seeing that. And um, don't underestimate yourself when it comes to relationships. And maybe some of you have been with people that just don't know how to handle you. They don't know how to handle a vivacious, creative, fiery, sexy person um, because they suck, you know, but, <laughs> and you're like, well, yeah, I have experienced some duds in my life. You know, I've kissed a few frogs and yeah, the situation now that I think about it was kind of beneath me. And so let's talk about it. We've got ego and um, this is the devil energy in this particular deck okay and the devil is having us you know ingrained into a false sense of entrapment and um being caught up in negative and fear-based thoughts okay and some of you here like you've picked people that are not to your level okay and um, maybe there is something there where you like being the one to take control or being the one to, maybe it is a bit of an ego validation in some way for you, pile number three. Okay. Cause you're like, well, at the end of the day, when it ends, you're like, they sucked anyway. So there could be some of that going on, but I also feel some of you here have been with people who have been. Uh, very difficult and challenging to be with. They could have been, you know, egomaniacs, narcissists, um, you know, people who are in active addiction, expecting you to take care of them. Okay. With the devil card here. And um, like, we can know within ourselves, like, Hey, I'm a catch and I'm a good person and I deserve somebody confident, intelligent, and warm in my life, and not this pile of slop I keep getting, you know, and um, that can be very disappointing, you know, and maybe some people you've been with have accused you of having a big ego or needing your ego stroked, or it's like, no, that's not what it is, you know, and they're very jealous of you in a way and put you down in order to make themselves feel better and also accuse you of having too high of an ego. So, and I feel some of these relationships pile number three have really um, eroded your confidence and have really eroded um, your fire in a lot of ways, okay? And um, I feel like you guys are damn sick of it. You're like, I am sick of this shit, Natalie. Like, why am I meeting? Why do I keep having this energy in my life? So we're going to look at that, okay? And anybody that's going to come into our life and destroy our sense of self and confidence, that person needs to go, you know? That person really, really needs to go. And... If we're, you know, starting to, if we're in a relationship and that person is making us feel really, really badly about ourselves, really low and really badly about ourselves and really fucking with our sense of self, that person has got to go, okay? And we have here confront and the moon card, okay? So confronting my feelings about this situation and the way that this has made me feel, okay? And sometimes it's on our own self too, like the person sucks and they're not good for us and 
but at the same time we keep choosing it so then we do feel bad about ourselves and we are it is hard to confront those deeper feelings of insecurity within us that tell us we don't deserve something good in life you know sometimes we can be present a um like a shield that is very confident towards others or you won't treat me that way or we present this very confident image or we tell ourselves I am this very confident person but we know within ourselves existing is a feeling of insecurity because it feels like every relationship is a self punishment you know and that's when there's a deeper insecurity that needs to be dealt with, you know, and maybe some of you are kind of working on these issues right now. And, um, you know, with this queen of wands, we have a gift here. Okay. You are uncovering new talents that will land you new work in a better position. I feel like, well, since this is a relationship reading, I'm going to gear it toward relationships. You are uncovering new talents and confidence and confidence, new intelligence and confidence that will land you a better relationship. You could get more confident in yourself as a result as well, okay? So there's a lot of gifts that you have that you hold within yourself, okay? A lot of talents and creativity and a lot of things for you to uncover and learn about yourself. But it's hard to do that when our energy is being brought down by a negative person or a negative situation, right? So there is so much more, I feel like, within yourself, pile number three, for you to discover so many gifts and talents creatively waiting for you. Um, and we have here gestures. You may be asked to help someone out or you may need a hand give deserved praise to others and you will receive recognition too. Okay. And I feel like you are always complimenting this person. When you are with someone, you are very complimentary towards them. Okay. You are very like, oh my God, that's so good. Or like, oh, you made this, like, this is really amazing. Okay. And you're very complimentary towards people that you're with. And you mean it. It's not just talking. You actually mean it. Okay? But I feel like the people that, some of the people you've been with, they are not complimentary towards you at all. In fact, they are cutting you down oftentimes with the things that they say or do. And I feel you guys are very generous with your gestures towards people in life, telling them. It reminds me um, of an old hairstylist that I used to have back in the day. And I just loved her energy. Like she, uh, she was such a girl's girl and she was always complimenting people all the time. And it was for people that really need and like words of affirmation. I mean, it was nice, right? And um, being able to tell someone, wow, like, you know, You've got a lot of gifts and talents and um, you're doing so good. And I mean, especially right, not just faking it, faking it and telling people, but actually meaning it, you know, and I feel you guys give a lot of kind gestures um, because, you know, like self-esteem and confidence is very important and you would like some of that energy yourself as well. So you are very complimentary towards others. And, but I also feel like people you've been with have not been the same towards you. And they've really ignored your gifts and talents. And they've made you feel like, well, shit, I guess I'm not shit, you know? And it's sometimes we can, it can be a weird competition in friendships or relationships, love relationships, where we're with someone who always needs their ego stroked all the time. Okay. They need compliments. They need their ego stroked all the time and they never tell you anything about you. Okay. Or they never give you a nice word. And it's like, well, 
okay? And we're not just giving a compliment to get one in return, right? But it's the energy of being warm and graceful and supportive and acknowledging other people's gifts in life um, that truly creates a sense of, you know, like I see you and you see me. We see each other and we appreciate each other, okay? And there's a lot of these like ego games, going back and forth, getting in the defensive, feeling badly about oneself, not wanting to confront those feelings. There's a lot of those games and this is a game. Do not mistake what I am saying, pile number three. This is a fucking game that someone has played with you. And it's, there may be multiple people too, because we're dealing with the major arcana. We're dealing with the devil here. There may be multiple people that have played these kind of games with you, but do not mistake me, pile number three. This is a game that these people are playing and it is a no sum game. Okay. There's no way to get points in this game because you can give and give and get nothing in return and be left to doubt, deal with your own emotions. And the thing is, it's really going to piss you off at the end of the day. And with this queen of wands here, it looks pissed off to me. Okay. And it's like, I feel some of you are saying, I'm sick of people ignoring my gifts and talents. I'm sick of people never acknowledging me. I'm sick of people. I'm, I'm sick of always being the one to do that for other people and my emotional needs get flushed down the toilet. So that is bullshit, pile number three. 1,000% that is bullshit, okay? And it leads to an unhealthy, unhealthy attachments that are based on ego validation um, and insecurity. And so that is definitely something that as we go in life, we want to mature out of those patterns, you know, and I feel it's very brave to want to confront our own insecurity and our own feelings about things. I mean, it takes a lot of bravery to do that, you know, and we have deception here. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Okay. And that's, like I said, that's the devil. Okay and confronting that deception, okay? Confronting that energy. It's like, I'm here for you, I show up, I encourage you, I tell you, you know, this, that, and the other, and I don't, you know, it's like, I feel like with this person, you're ripping their mask off, and you're like, I don't believe, I don't believe that you are who you say you are anymore, okay? And that moment of ripping the mask off and confronting the emotions, that's, um, you know, and I feel like you guys are like, hey, if this person keeps deceiving me and lying and, you know, this type of thing, I am going to call them out. And I'm going to call them out in front of other people too. And they're not going to like it. I mean, I feel you guys have definitely had your share of this and you've been pissed about it for a long time. Okay. And um, you're sick of people's deception and people's lying. And people who deceive and lie to others all the time are doing it because they are insecure and because they are cowards, you know, basically. We have here communication, the oracle at Delphi in Greece, and that's coming out under your guys' gifts. Okay, pile number three, I'm going to need you guys to. Um, Take your place on the frickin' in the temple, okay? I'm going to need you guys to go and stand in your beautiful, regal attire in the temple and take your position where you belong. And I'm going to need you to take your finger, see how I'm doing this with my hand right now, pal number three, and flick the person off that doesn't belong there, okay? Whether that's your own insecurity, whether that's, you know, holding on to anger um, about certain situations, um, whether that is, you know, a person who has made you feel less than and lied to you, I'm going to need you to take your 
index and your thumb finger and flick that person off the throne. And I'm gonna need you to adjust your crown and go stand in your position, okay? And <laughs> I'm gonna need you to, um, you know, respect my authority on this matter, pile number three, okay? But <laughs> that you need to be going and taking your position, okay? Where you belong, which is a respected, regal, confident, intelligent, graceful, gifted oracle who has important messages to share with others, okay? And, um, an intelligent person who can uncover deception very quickly because they are connected to their intuition. And some of you here have some very strong gifts that you have inherited um, and talents that you have inherited from your past lives and over time. And some of you here are very gifted intuitives as well. And the issue with that is I think you kind of know what people need to hear to feel better about themselves and you're able to give that to them, but they may say things in return and not mean it. They may engage in deceptive, secretive behavior with the moon and deception, lying, okay? And just be totally egocentric and unable to give you that sense of validation in return, okay? So I always tell people when it comes to the devil, do not go looking for kind gestures, validation, etc., from people who can never give it. All right. And that's a lesson that we learn from our parents. You know, if there was a parent that you always were seeking their validation and they were always cutting you down, there's the pattern. There's the negative pattern right there. Um, I saw that with one of my siblings who was constantly being cut down by my mother all the time and she would constantly seek validation or approval from her and she would never give it. And I remember telling my sibling, do not go to her and seek something that she can never give, right? It, it puts you, it takes you out of the power position when you do that and this person is never going to give that. It's not in their wheelhouse to acknowledge other people, okay? It's not a skill that they possess. It's not a gift that they have. Um, and unfortunately, those type of people live very meaningless existences because all their relationships are, are based on insecurity, validation, and seeking supply from other people. Like, that's all they live for, and it's very empty, okay? So pile number three, I just want to tell you that you have a lot of gifts when it comes to intuitive energy. You, you are a very confident, intelligent, and warm person, and you do not deserve to be with these people who cannot get their shit together, okay? And um, we have here, have faith in your dreams, okay? And sometimes if we have so many bad situations with bad people, it's like, I just don't even care anymore. Fuck it. Okay. And sometimes if we keep, we keep going back to the same pattern because we're not thinking big enough, you know, and that's where we need to expand our thinking and think bigger and go, you know what? I actually see better for myself. And it's not this, you know, shit ass situation that's currently going on. I deserve better than this. Okay. Okay. And that is going to help you guys bring about the love that you're looking for. Oh yeah, here's the finding card, okay? And this is about finding yourself, okay? And it's sweet and it's soft and it's tender and it's kind and it's not angry. It's about appreciating yourself, validating yourself, finding yourself and saying, I am a good person. And I don't deserve to be treated this way. And I'm going to take a step back here and I'm going to spend some time finding myself and validating myself and appreciating myself so that I'm not looking for it in people that can never give it, you know? And that's a huge lesson in life about appreciating ourselves, finding ourselves, 
And um, there's a really good song. I'll post it in the description box below if I can find it, but I remember hearing it in 2019. And I think it's, um, it, it's called Find You, Find You, okay? And I think it's by somebody named Samantha or her name starts with an S, I think, but it's a song and it's called Find You. And I heard it in a yoga class and I just remember like tears dreaming, streaming down my face when I heard it because I was like, wow, this is, and I put it on repeat because I was like, wow, like this is, this is a deep song and it's about finding yourself. It's called Find You. Um, and it just turned 1111 11 right now on my clock, pile number three. So welcome to your reading. It, let me show you the clock. It says 1111, 11. see, I'm not lying. I wouldn't deceive you. It actually says 1111. 11. <laughs> so anyway, finding yourself is a way out of that loophole for sure. Oh yeah, we've got the moon in Libra and love. Isn't that beautiful? Um, that's I love the pink and um, the pretty, how pretty that card is. Bring peace to your life and your relationships will flourish. Moon in Libra and love. And part of that is finding peace within yourself, um, knowing what you deserve, being confident, um, you know, finding peace. If you have been needing to go through, you know, you've having some angry feelings, pissed off and things like that, I get it because you've been dealing with a particular type of a person. Um, but the moon in Libra is definitely um, about, you know, being balanced in, for Libra types, Libras need to be balanced in their emotions to find peace. That's a huge lesson um, about being, you know, and balance is important, right? I'm not all good and I'm not all bad. I don't deserve the shit of the world, but I also, every day of my life, I'm not gonna feel amazing, right? I'm somewhere in between. I have a balanced view of myself and what I deserve in life. Um, I'm not the, you know, grandest person to ever walk this earth because I don't know, you know, who is, right? But I'm also not the scum of the earth either, <laughs> you know? Like I deserve some peace in my life and I deserve some, you know, positivity and good relationships and finding love within ourselves, right? Is the first step towards finding love in, in other in other regards, okay? And I was gonna pull some cards, but I actually think that that's good. Um, I like where this reading went, and I like where it, it's it gone, and I'm happy with it. So pile number three, I do like how everything, I feel at the end of the day, it is about finding peace within yourself and finding who, finding you, and validating you, and appreciating yourself. And um, that's going to bring peace and balance in your relationships. And it's also going to help ward off and drive away people that are just looking for free compliment handouts and ego stroking and that type of stuff, you know, like really superficial people who just need somebody to tell them that they're great, you know, like that. Um, that's going to remove a lot of those people from your life. And I will post that song below now that I remembered it. Um, look for it in the description box below. Once I update the video and everything, I'll post it below. And um, it's called Find You. So thank you so much, pile number three. Wishing you all a very wonderful day. Take care.